What chemicals made the clown prince of crime? No joke, we've got the answers. Joker is one of the most anticipated villains for the new Suicide Squad movie. Even though he isn't the main villain, I'm still pumped to see the new Joker on the big screen. In honor of the squad and of the Joker, let's take a look at how he became who he is. So the Joker's origin is technically revealed to us in the popular story The Killing Joke, which recently was made into an okay animated movie. But we're going to be taking a look at exactly what makes him snap instead of the events leading up to it. We know the Joker fell into a vat of chemicals that bleached his skin, turned his lips blood red, and turned his hair green. There also might have been some mental effects, but the chemicals may or may not have had a part in that. We know the Joker is bonkers, at least according to this origin, and he loses his mind shortly after he exits the chemical pool. So again, it's debatable whether or not the chemicals directly mentally affected him. We however are going to assume it didn't, since his mental stability broke only after he was exposed to the chemicals, rather than while. Let's start from the ground up with the key features. What bleaches or whitens the skin? Well, a lot of products and chemicals do. One thing that may be our culprit is mercury. Mercury is a chemical known for being toxic and can burn the skin upon touching it. Since the skin on lips is much thinner than most of the skin on our bodies, the mercury would bleach the skin in the process of burning it, while the lips would turn red with exposure to the blood underneath. So we've got the classic red mouth and white skin on this one. So far, mercury makes sense. Only it doesn't. See, we've got a few issues with this one. One is that, again, mercury is toxic. Ace Chemicals, where the Joker met his diabolical destiny, never seemed to have any toxic warning signs, and I doubt the company would allow a pool of mercury to be so openly exposed at the workplace. Another issue is that it doesn't have anything to do with turning your hair green. That's a tricky one, and mercury has about as much an idea on how to do that as I do. And the final issue is that we do have a hint to what the chemical is, and flat out, it's not mercury. It's some kind of acid. Alright, so, in eliminating one answer, we have gained a lead. We know the Joker fell into acid. That's a pretty good way to narrow down our suspects. Let's start over with the bleached skin. What are some chemicals that are used on the skin? So much for narrowing it down, huh? Let's take a guess and say, wart remover. It's common, so it makes sense that Ace Chemicals would be working with that substance, or at least a part of it. Lucky guess. Did you know that some wart remover products can turn areas of your skin white and rough? Well, now you do know. Now, what in wart remover causes that? We know acid causes it, but that'd be too big of a coincidence to work, right? Wrong. The chemical in liquid wart remover that can turn your skin white and rough is salicylic acid. And the reason it turns your skin white and rough? Because the top layers of your skin are dissolving. AKA, at least in a small degree, your skin is burning. And if your skin burned, let's say on your face, your lips would be red, and your face would be white. I think we're starting to see a picture here. But wait, that's a temporary effect, isn't it? They wouldn't sell a product that permanently burned you, right? Well, yes, that's correct. There's other components in liquid wart removal that tone down the process, I'm sure. Otherwise, it'd get pretty messy. But what if the vat wasn't filled with liquid wart remover and was simply filled with salicylic acid? If that's the case, it makes sense why the Joker's body burned permanently. There were no other chemicals to counter the burning. Well, maybe not true. Just because the burning wasn't countered doesn't mean other chemicals weren't present. See, it's possible that Ace Chemicals was creating chlorine. Now, that in itself could be a big leap, since chlorine gas is toxic, meaning that stuff wouldn't be allowed in the workplace. However, outside the workplace in small amounts could be a different story. See, mixing bleach and types of acid can create chlorine gas. Why is this important? Well, chlorine is actually a pretty popular product. If you have a swimming pool, chances are the water contains chlorine, which is probably why it tastes funny if you were to ever get it in your mouth. The chlorine is in the pool of water to keep it clean instead of the dirt residue from people seeping into the water. However, you know what chlorine is also used in? Hair dye. And you know what color changes your hair? Go on, guess. We all know the answer. Green. Chlorine can turn your hair green. So, 
let's say the Joker falls into this vat of bleach and salicylic acid. What happens? Does he die in real life? Not if he's wearing the red hood, which he was in the story. The red hood has a chance of keeping him from swallowing the bleach and acid, preventing his death. However, the liquid seeps through his clothes and does go into his hood, whitening his skin and reddening his lips. As the Joker gets to his knees outside the plant, he's surrounded by pools of the stuff. What are these pools giving off? Could it be chlorine gas or even a small amount of liquid chlorine? Yes, they completely could be doing that. So when the Joker removes his hood, the amount of chlorine is too small to hurt him, but big enough to dye his hair green, and the combinations of all the chemicals make his transformation permanent. So that's our little look into how the Joker went from the average Joe to the not-so-average Joe Kerr. It was all because of some silicylic acid, bleach, and a dab of chlorine to complete his clown-like transformation. Sounds pretty painful to me, but like always, the Joker found it was a good laugh. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that special episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as for what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me do in the future. This was the Suicide Squad release special. It is coming out today. I am so pumped for it. I'm probably going to see it today. I'm recording this like a week before it actually comes out, two weeks actually, so I've got no clue. But I probably will go see it when it goes out. I recommend you guys do as well. It looks like a great movie. And again, I am so excited to see the new Joker. I hope you guys enjoyed that movie. And I hope you guys enjoy your day. Have a good one.